Have you ever asked yourself, how did Shanks learn about the world government's secret operation on the Gumma Gumma Nomi? No. Like, seriously, how did he find out that CP9 had it in their hands when it had to be one of the world government's most important missions of all time? Not only this, but how did Shanks even learn about the importance of the Gumma Gumma Nomi since its true name was erased from history? In this video, I'm gonna explain to you all of the possible traitors and their motives to leaking the Gumma Gumma Nomi's CP9 mission to Shanks. Could it have been the Gorose, Aokiji, Kizaru, Vegapunk, Dragon, Garp? or maybe it was my personal favorite, someone else who's been hidden in plain sight. I'm also going to explain to you how he learned the true name of the Gumma Gumma no Mi, and lastly, every single thing that Shanks knows about the One Piece, why it's a lot more than you think, and of course, the real reason he waited for Luffy to awaken into Joy Boy in order to find it. I promise, this video will leave you in awe and mind blown over how Oda already told us everything. And now, to start everything off, in chapter 1017, Husu tells us that 12 years ago, someone stole the Gumma Gumma no Mi from a government ship, and then in the next chapter, he confirms that it was red-haired Shanks. We obviously now know that the reason the world government sent a secretive government ship after the fruit and not a navy ship is because it's arguably the most important fruit in the entire history of One Piece. Knowing how secretive CP9 is with their missions, how the heck did Shanks learn the exact ship and its location that had the Nika fruit? Well, I believe that there's seven possible ways that he could have learned this intel and two of them have an extremely high chance of coming true. The first possibility for Shanks learning about the fruit has to do with Aokiji and Saul. In chapter 1076, Oda finally confirms that Shanks' territory is Elbaf, and this key detail is huge for his character. There's a lot of reasons this is so important, and one of them is the fact that that means Shanks' next door neighbor is Saul, which means he's probably learned a lot about the Void Century and the Ancient Kingdom. The Shanks and Saul connection is most likely the way Shanks stole with the Gumma Gumma no Mi since Saul, a former Marine, could have most definitely learned about this secret operation from one of his friends in the Marines. I believe the man to tell him was Aokiji since we know the two to be close and I mean, Aokiji even faked his friend's death. On top of this, I'd only expect such a high class Marine like Aokiji to even learn about the Gumma Gumma no Mi operation since the government doesn't really tell anyone about their missions with CP9. If anyone were to know about a CP9 mission, it'd be Aokiji since we see in the Water 7 saga that he was the one in on the CB9 mission to capture Robin. He was the one who leaked the fact that Robin was heading to Water 7. However, he was actually hoping that Robin would escape. In the post Ennis Lobby conversation between Robin and Aokiji, we also see that Aokiji is now carrying Saul's will, and his justice even changed after the Ohara incident from burning justice to lazy justice because he started to question the government. If anyone were to betray the government and carry out his own sense of justice, it'd be Aokiji since we've already seen him betray the government multiple times. On top of that, who else is lazy enough to tell someone else to capture the Gumma Gumma no Mi instead of doing it himself? Aokiji of course would also most likely not be able to do what Shanks did since if he did, he would have lost his job. And remember, Aokiji was the one who said, I never thought the world government was the be all end all and you don't need to be affiliated with the navy to accomplish things in the world. Doflamingo also describes post time skip Aokiji as being no simple wanderer and only a man who who's made up his mind about something can make a face like that. So what has he made up his mind about during the time skip? We know something changed his determination and it had to be something that occurred after his fight with the Kainu since he didn't have that phase before. It seems very likely that after his fight with the Kainu, he went to Elbaf, learned everything that Saul could teach him, and then made up his mind that he's gonna go against the world government to solve more of the true history, even if that means teaming up with pirates. This also makes me wonder, why the hell did he team up with Blackbeard and not with Shanks? I mean, it would logically just make sense to go with Shanks since he seems to be friends with Saul right? Well, what if Aokiji actually is working with Shanks on the low and is actually infiltrating Blackbeard? I mean, Aokiji is based off of the famous character, Shunsaku Kudo, who was literally a private detective, just saying. I also wonder, after reading chapter 1079, if that was Aokiji on his way to Egghead. There's definitely a high chance of him showing up 
to combat the second Ohara like incident and to help Robin escape once again. Now, going back to the Gama Gama no Mi, I also don't think Aokiji would have known the true importance of the fruit. Like, I feel like he just heard about a secret operation to get it and knew that he couldn't allow the world government to get their hands on such a thing. There's also the chance that he could have asked Vegapunk about its importance, only for him to find out that such a fruit doesn't exist in the ancient texts. I mean, Vegapunk is an associate of Aokiji's and in fact, this actually leads me to the next possible way Shanks could have found out about the world government having the Gama Gama no Mi, which is in my opinion, the best option by far. So Vegapunk could have also been able to tell Saul, and I think there's two possible ways he could have learned. The first way is through the baddest bee in the world government, Stussy. As we now know, the clone of Miss Buckingham Stussy has been working as an undercover spy for Vegapunk for over two decades. This means that she could have potentially been leaking top secret information of Vegapunk for 20 years. And of course, this timeline well exceeds the timeline of when the world government got their hands on the Gama Gama no Mi. When I told you the possibility for this outcome to be higher than Aokiji's, I wasn't joking. Now, of course, she could have told Vegapunk about it, who would have realized that something was special about the fruit, who would have ultimately ended up telling Saul and Shanks to steal it. The next guy that could have potentially leaked the Gama Gama no Mi operation of Vegapunk is Kizaru. The probability for this to happen isn't as high as the others, but it still has a decent shot of happening considering how close Kizaru is to Vegapunk. Now, I don't think Kizaru would leak this info with the intent to get it stolen, but actually would have just mentioned it casually to his nephew. In case you forgot, Vegapunk's bodyguard is Sento Maru, who is Kizaru's nephew, and I think Kizaru may have told him about some secret operation to get the Gama Gama no Mi. Kizaru wouldn't think much of this because, as we saw in Egghead's cover pages, Vegapunk himself met up with the Gorosei, which would make most think that he works under them and for them. I mean, he actually does do that, but of course, we now know that he has his true intentions after solving what Ohara figured out, and Vegapunk would either overhear Kizaru telling Sentu Maru, or Sentu Maru would just tell him, since Vegapunk is the one who researches and studies Devil Fruits. I mean, who knows? Maybe Kizaru would tell Vegapunk himself as he's studying Kizaru's light powers for the future pacifistas And I feel like Kizaru would say something like Oh, speaking of devil fruits, did you hear about the CB9 operation to get the Gama Gama no Mi? Vegapunk would then of course realize that the Gama Gama no Mi doesn't exist and would then proceed to tell Saul about the situation. There also is the possibility that Vegapunk found out on his own without Kizaru's stussy, but instead with another high class marine. Because I mean, like I said before, he's literally the devil fruit guy. Like why would someone not tell him about it, especially considering that 12 years ago, no one knew about his connection to Ohara. There's also another guy who has a huge connection to Ohara, which leads me to the next way Shanks could have found out, which is by Dragon. Dragon has to have some connection to the Marines, considering that he's Garp's son, and many even believe that he used to be a Marine. We all know how Garp wants all of his kids to be future Marine legends, so I'm pretty sure he would have done the same with Dragon. In his introduction, we even see that Smoker calmly tells him that the government's after his head without any intent of fighting. This makes it seem as if Dragon used Smoker back in his day, and knowing that Dragon most likely has ties to certain guys in the marines. We could only assume that one of them leaked it to him, who ultimately told Saul or Shanks about it. If this were the case, I wonder if the traitor would be Garp, or maybe someone else like Aokiji or even a sword member. The biggest plot hole in this theory is that I feel like Dragon would be the type of guy who gets the fruit on his own, considering that he already was the world's worst criminal, so I don't find this situation to be as likely as the others. I'm also like 99% positive that Shanks met with Dragon after Luffy ate the Gumma Gumma Minomi to tell him that his son was the one to eat the greatest fruit of all time and that he knows Luffy will become a great pirate one day. The reason I think Shanks did this is because he went to see Ray Lee just to tell him about Luffy and it seems like he tells everyone he meets about Luffy. For example, he even told Mihawk and Whitebeard. Like why would he not meet the father of the kid he bet his arm on? Maybe this is also why Dragon feels like he doesn't need to see his son since Shanks may have convinced him that Luffy is Joy Boy and that his destiny will keep him safe. I feel like Shanks would have told him something like, like the video and subscribe to the channel because I figured something huge out on you, Dragon. No seriously, my next video will be on how Dragon's tattoo tells us what the One Piece is, so subscribe with the notifications turned on if you want to see it. I'm also doing a face reveal at 50k, so let's get those numbers up. Truly, 
Thank you guys for everything. Now, the last possible ways Shanks could have found out about the Gumma Gumma no Mi are more on the speculation side of things. However, it is Shanks that we're talking about, the most mysterious and sus character in One Piece, so I thought to include it. One of the ways is maybe Shanks has a Virgo type of crew member or ally working in the shadows of the Marines. There's literally no evidence to this, but you honestly just never know with Red Haired. The next possibility is that he learned through a Gorsei member or high class celestial dragon or even Marine that has the intentions of betraying the world government. We know that Shanks could can casually set up a meeting with the Gorosei and that the reason for Sengoku stopping the war is only because it's you red haired so I wouldn't be surprised if one of the higher ups in the government leaked this operation to Shanks. Who knows they may have even made a deal with him considering that they're risking their life by leaking this information and this of course all goes back to Aokiji who is in fact a high class marine and I still think that Saul being involved makes more sense than Shanks learning about it on his own. And so now that I explained every way in which Shanks could have learned about the Gumma Gumma CP9 operation? Let me know in the comments which one you like best. And now let's talk about how Shanks' battle with them would actually go down. Personally, I see it going something like this. As the Shanks pirates get within range of Who's Who's government ship, Yasup and Beckman say it seems like there are CP9 agents on board. That's trouble. Shanks, the Chad of Chads, the Conqueror of Conquerors, says there's nothing to worry about with me as your captain. After this, each ship starts shooting cannonballs at each other when Shanks leaps over to their ship even through the windy storm and right as who's who gets ready to attack in his hybrid form shanks one shots him with divine departure this leaves such an ugly scar on his face that he chooses to wear a mask covering this scar for the rest of his life shanks effortlessly takes care of the rest of the cp9 agents picks up the most valuable treasure box ever other than the one piece and then leaps back to the red force only to party with his buds over what they just got their hands on and so now that i've explained how I think the battle would go, now let me explain to you the only plot hole in the theory, and heads up, it's not really a plot hole, but I know someone will bring it up in the comments. So we don't really know how long Shanks has owned Elbaf, which puts up the question, has he owned it for more than 12 years? The reason I bring this up is because there's technically no proof that he's known Saul for 12 years, however, I find it really likely that he has, and here's why. Sure, maybe. Just maybe, Elbaf wasn't Shanks' territory 12 years ago, and even if it wasn't, it doesn't really matter, because I would still think that he was very close to Saul. The reason for this goes all the way back to chapter 1, since in this chapter, we learn that Shanks only fights for his friends. He tells the douchiest guy in the series, Mr. 8 million berries, that you can pour drinks on me, you can throw food at me, you can even spit on me, I'll just laugh that stuff off. But good reason or not, nobody hurts a friend of mine. After this, we all know what goes down, and you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Saul and Elbaf? Well, this has to do with Saul and Elbaf because Shanks would only conquer a territory that has his friends. He isn't like Kaido, who conquered Wano for a sinister reason. The reason he most likely put his flag down on Elbaf is to protect them and to be around his friends. And knowing this, even if he wasn't strong enough to conquer them 12 years ago, or simply just didn't do it yet, I still still think he was already friends with them considering that by that time, he already roamed the entire seas. He could have started becoming close with the Elbaf during his voyage with the Roger Pirates and then frequently visited or even trained with them afterwards. Another huge key that could tie Shanks with Saul and Ohara is from something that Shanks says in his meetup with Whitebeard. Whitebeard says quote, This is wine from the West Blue. You bring this to our meeting? Shanks follows by saying, I've sailed all around the world, but the wine that's made in the place I grew up always tastes the best. It's a wine from my hometown. This proves that Shanks grew up or was at least born in the West Blue and guess what island is also in the West Blue? That's right. Ohara. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that Shanks was from Ohara, but I will tell you this, just like how Luffy stopped by a bunch of East Blue Islands when heading out to the Grand Line, I wouldn't be surprised if Shanks stopped by the West Blue Islands when returning to his hometown time to time. Who knows, he may have even become friends with some of the Ohorans in the way that Luffy became friends with a dog named Choo Choo, the entire Bratier, Gaimon, and Nami's hometown. If Shanks did do this, this would of course lead to him and Saul having an even better relationship than we expected. Knowing that Shanks' territory is Elbaf and that he's from the West Blue makes it very strange that during the time that Luffy ate the Gumma Gumma no Mi, Shanks made Fusha Village his base. And this is really weird because why the hell would he make this random place his base? instead of his hometown or instead of Elbaf. I mean, I know the dude had to be risen up Makino behind the scenes, but that still isn't enough of a reason considering that Shanks doesn't seem to be the simp type. In fact, many people speculate that Shanks was there to 
the sea is and actually meant to give the devil fruit to him as well. This would explain the reason why he seemed upset and shocked at the fact that Luffy ate it and this really makes me question, like did Shanks know about the importance of the Gumma Gumma Nomi? Well, yes, actually, he most likely did and there's three main ways he could have found out. First is through Vegapunk, since Vegapunk himself may have figured out 12 years ago that the Gumma Gumma Nomi has something to do with Nika, Joy Boy, and the Void Century since the name Gumma Gumma Nomi doesn't pop up on any ancient devil fruit text. On top of this, Shanks might actually know even more about Joy Boy than even Vegapunk since he was on Roger's crew, the crew that saw the One Piece, which leads me to the second way he could have found out. Now I understand that Shanks and poor Buggy weren't able to go to Laugh Tale, however that doesn't mean that the Roger Pirates didn't tell them anything about what they saw. We know that at the very least, Shanks at least overheard them talking about Joy Boy since Odin casually just brings up the name of the legend right before his departure. I mean, who knows? One of the Roger Pirates could have gotten drunk and then leaked some of the Void Sentry or Secrets of the World to Shanks and Buggy. We also know that he learned about the Joy Boy apology letter on Fishman Island, showing that he at least knows a little on the subject. And if anyone were to know the true name of the Gumma Gumma Nomi, it'd be a Roger Pirate since they were the ones who saw the entire tale of Joy Boy and the Sun God Nika. Like, is it really a coincidence that Rayleigh gave Luffy the option to learn hockey from him? I mean, Rayleigh never even helped out Ace for anything, but he wanted to do everything he could for a funny rubber boy. Now, the third way Shanks could have learned about the importance of the Gumma Gumma Nomi is possibly from a Five Elder. Chapter 1044 confirms that the Five Elders are the only people in the world that we know as of right now who know the Devil Fruit's true name, which is the Hito Hito Nomi, Maro Nika. Vegapunk knew that Luffy turned into Nika, however, he himself didn't ever show us that he actually knew the true name of the fruit. One of the elders could have told Shanks about its importance and I know this is a bit of a stretch, pun intended, and I don't even really think it has that high of a chance to be true. However, considering that Shanks has the ability to meet up with them on his own terms, anything is possible. Like, who knows, he may be closer with them than what Oda shows us on the outside. There also seems to be actual proof that Shanks knew the true name of the Gumma Gumma Nomi since in chapter 1054, we see that Shanks finally wants to go get the One Piece. This is very interesting because he makes it seem like he's been waiting to get the One Piece and that he finally knows it's the right time. Is it also really a coincidence that he says this right after looking at Luffy in his Joy Boy form? Remember that Vegapunk said that Luffy looks just like the warrior in white from the ancient texts, who's also called the Sun God Nika. And knowing that Vegapunk knows about this, we can also assume that Shanks knows about it since Salt probably showed him or told him about Nika from the books of Ohara. I feel like Shanks was always waiting for Luffy to become the warrior in white by awakening the true powers of the fruit so he himself can also claim the One Piece. The reason I think this is because just like I said before, the Roger Pirates casually brought up Joy Boy and stuff about the One Piece around Shanks and one line that's extremely important to this theory is when Roger says, we were just too early, the One Piece they call it, I wonder who will find it. This shows that even if you find the One Piece that doesn't necessarily mean you can use it to change the world and it seems like the only way you can use it is if Joy Boy is there and present. Roger hints at this when he says, someone will be born and eventually surpass us. And who else could he be talking about if it's not Joy Boy? Like he's obviously not talking about Shanks here since he says that someone will be born showing that this man that will surpass even him isn't alive yet. I also believe that since Shanks knows about this and about Joy Boy, this is probably also why he didn't want to eat the fruit himself. I think he already knew that he wasn't Joy Boy. However, I still think he's interested in finding the One Piece and is planning on either using Luffy to get it or finding it together with Luffy. This is most likely why he hasn't gotten it already and why he hasn't even tried to get it. On top of this, there's even more proof from Oda that this may have been his plan all along and that he always knew the true nature of the fruit since when he sees Luffy in his Nika Joy Boy form, he thinks back to the time when he stole the Gumma Gumma Nomi from Who's Who. It really seems like Shanks was thinking that Luffy's white form came from the Gumma Gumma Nomi and this is the best proof that Shanks always knew the true powers of the Gum Gum Fruit. Also notice how while this happens, who's who even states, what are they after? There's no treasure here, only a single devil fruit. What could that mean to them? It just turns you into rubber. 
right? Even who's who was wondering why the hell Shanks would want the Gumma Gumma Nomi so bad since at its surface it seems like an average fruit. This shows that only someone who knew of its true power would even attempt to steal it from the world government. Did you also ever notice that Shanks giving Luffy the Gumma Gumma Nomi is a direct parallel with Corazon? Shanks is the Corazon to Luffy and Corazon is the Shanks to Law. Shanks is the person that Luffy looked up to while Corazon is the person that Law looked up to. Shanks stole the most important devil fruit in the entire story from the world government and then Luffy ate it. Corazon stole what's named the ultimate devil fruit from the world government and then Law ate it. In Luffy's backstory, Shanks sacrifices his body to save Luffy. In Law's backstory, Corazon sacrifices his body to save Law. Luffy's pirate crew name is named after something that Shanks gave him, which is the Straw Hat. Law's crew name is named after Corazon, since Corazon means heart in Spanish, and since Corazon gave Law a heart-shaped devil fruit. So now, you may ask, well, where am I going with this? Well, maybe just like how Corazon is a celestial dragon that befriended a Will of D member, maybe Shanks is also a celestial dragon that befriended a Will of D member. There's a ton of more evidence to this theory, which has to do with Blackbeard, Doflamingo, the Gorsei, and Rocks. And click on this video if you want to see more reasons as to why Shanks is a celestial dragon. I promise, this is only the surface.